about six years ago, Kistler took the decision to actually develop and produce the Thor dummy in-house. There was two main reasons in order to do so. For one, Kistler has had the instrumentation and the in-dummy DAS technology for many years. However, there was no access to the actual chassis, the Crestus dummy. The second one is the in-house system approach. Going away from a component supplier to a system supplier, which at the end of the day we consider the Thor dummy to be. The Thor dummy is the designated successor for the currently used Hybrid 3 dummy, which is used in almost all of the regulatory and homologation testing. The Thor dummy is currently in use at the Urancap test program, and this fits very well. Having Urancap on the one side and having the European dummy development and production on the other side are two components which get along very well. What makes the Thor dummy the future test device for passive safety testing? Well, during the development of the Thor dummy, the most recent experience and knowledge on biomechanics was introduced. And if we compare the Thor dummy to the currently used Hybrid 3 dummy, uh, which has reached almost 50 years of age meanwhile, uh, you can imagine that there is a lot of progress and a lot of enhancements incorporated into this new dummy design and development. Furthermore, the Thor dummy allows for the measurement capability of 160 plus channels. If we compare this to the currently used Hybrid 3, which is limited to a channel count of about 50 to 60, you can imagine that collecting data with this crash test dummy gives you much more detailed information uh, on the various body segments compared to the currently used dummy. Each crash test dummy and its components respectively need to be verified and certified on a regular basis in order to ensure that these components actually meet the biofidelic requirements that we have for the dummy types. For us, as part of the complete dummy development, it was quite essential to actually get knowledge and information on the individual components at a very early stage in order to not only understand the performance of the complete dummy or the dummy segments, but to actually have this knowledge also on a component level. Dummies are made from different materials. Uh, we start off with the vinyl or PVC material, which is used for primarily the flesh parts. Also, we use uh, PU for some of the flesh parts of the dummy. Next material is rubber. Rubber is mainly used in the neck area, in the lumbar spine area. The skeleton naturally is made from steel, which is covered with a damping material in order to have the right performance. In parallel to the dummy development process, we obviously had to look at the dummy production as well. Um, up until two years ago, we had limited space capabilities and consequently we sat together with the owner of this building in order to discuss an extension which was then realized uh, to meet our needs for size and for the production capabilities. For the planning and the realization of this new building, we had to consider several factors. Amongst those, obviously, we had to look at current but also advanced production methods and machines. And secondly, we had to consider also the environmental conditions in which the production takes place. The production area is a complete class front area, means that everybody can see what we are doing and why we are doing it. This is totally different compared to six years ago, where we started this project as a top secret project inside our company. The name was Charlotte at this time, where internally and externally nobody was allowed to know what we were doing. And this is the big change which we see today. We make things open, we make things transparent. Everybody can see what we can do and we don't want to keep any secrets in our house.